Okay, here we have Bill and Lady. Ready to go this morning. The lion's ready. I like to tie my lines together. A lot of people don't. I do, it's just, to me, it's a safety thing. It also could be a hazard too, but most of the time it's a safety thing. Be over here. type of harness for over 40 years actually I've been working horses for over 40 years and I've never actually used anything but D-ring so I can't really compare um, to other harnesses so I'm just going to explain about these um, the only thing really different between this and, and the other harnesses is this D right here so because of that D you don't have to get that close I don't think <laughs> but maybe because of that D you have a short tug and then you have a long tug and uh, um, the purpose of that is so that tug, it's a, it's a bit of a pivot point um, when need be. So that's about the only thing different. Um, you still have your, your, well no, you've got that and then you have your side strap, which is this, and your pole strap. You have one on each side. And about the only thing difference between these and the other harnesses, that's about the only difference. So you still have your back pad, you still have your, your hames of course, and then your bridge in here. I like to use this type of britchin. You get your britchin back here, but you also get the strap here, which really helps support them, helps them when they hold back. It's uh, called a basket britchin, I guess that's what they call it. So, we will get them hitched up. Uh, because of the D-ring harness, I have a three-piece neck yoke, which is all covered in snow. Now recently, I had to do some welding on this particular neck yoke. That right there is, is got, got uh, some weld built up so because of that i can't do what i normally would do which would be i would normally have it hitched to the pole um to start with but since i can't do that because of the hitching i would do this it's a bit of a pain but it will wear down fast enough so i get your neck yoke hitched up and i'll pick the pole up to the neck yoke which is actually the way a lot of people do it anyways. But, so on this pole, um, explain a little bit on this. It's a, it's a wooden pole, which I prefer. Um, with your logging carts, um, all it is is a pipe that this pole slides into. And so it's handy when you're in the woods. If you break down, break the pole, which happens, um, you just cut another one. And if I can find a limb, at about the right distance that I need to have for the right length pole. This works really good. It's amazing how strong these limbs are. This is a hard hack pole, which I prefer the best. Um, this one's lasted over a year now. Um, I expect before the end of the winter I might have to replace it, but that's okay. Um, it's simple enough to do. Okay, so we will come around here and get them picked up. I, uh, We'll always hit the inside tug first. Get a bit. And also that means when they, if the horses slid, swung out like they were just there, you just grab that outside tug and then generally walk right in. So I'm come around here. Uh, and then I'll hit my last tug. And when I do that, I'll get behind it with my body on the whipple tree to swing this in place. And I like to be able to, to put it in place just like this. And most of the time I can. But if I can't, I will come up here, release this front pole strap, 
and then come back here and it's really easy to put in place and then you just come up here grab that pole strap get behind the whoop, uh, the duck yoke just like we do with the evener the whoop tree, and slide this right into place what that does is it takes more weight off the pole and it puts it on your backpack instead of on your neck. Um, this could even be tighter. I could possibly even go one more link on my tugs and by doing this I can actually pull it tighter and the, the lazy straps um, which are connected to the hames they should have very little weight on them and they do have very little weight. If you come look right here on, on bills there's basically nothing there. So by doing that, it just takes the weight off the neck, puts it on the back pad. Um, this strap, these two straps, the pole strap and the, and the side strap, they should be pretty well straight with each other. Your short tug, it's very important that this comes down at the right angle. If it doesn't, it messes up your line of draft. And one way to adjust that is two ways different that will mess it up. You have up here, and you'll see I have washers and nuts in here so I can slide this draft up and down. Your horse pullers are very, very, very particular with this, and I am too, but I'm not quite so skilled with it as a lot of those guys are. But you need to have this in the right spot to get the maximum out of pull. But also, if this back pad, if this strap is too short for some reason, it's gonna lift up on the back of it and it's gonna change that. So you need to have that at the right angle. And then with your high evener on these logging carts, it's not gonna be a straight shot from here to that evener because of the height of the evener. So that's why you have to have this adjusted, right? So you still have the same pull no matter where this tug is, the back tug. Now on a mow machine, which is also very heavy, that would be, even it would be way down low, and that would actually run that tug straight. But with your high drafts on these um, carts, you, these, in my opinion, work the best because it keeps the draft right and it just takes the weight off the, off the neck. Um, it's surprising, I had, this last year, I had troubles with Bill. Um, I didn't even realize it until I went to clip his mane, which I like clip manes. I, I like them roached like this, but that's just my preference. But anyways, I was clipping it, and all of a sudden, I got back in this area, and he was about freaked out on me because it was so sore, and I didn't even realize it. You know, I brush him every day, but it just wasn't that noticeable until I went to clip him. So I did some adjusting. I got these, got let more weight off his neck, and I actually bought another collar. The collar I had wasn't the best, so that's why I changed that. He's fighting now. So, anyways, I uh, I know there's a lot of other guys that have done uh, explained D-ring harnesses to you before, but I just wanted to put my um, my story about it. So, hope you enjoyed it.